and we are going to learn when to use the commas in English and what is the rules of it. Now we know that in English and in any other language, if you want to write, then you have to learn something we call punctuation marks. These punctuation marks make your writing easier and make it easier for the reader to read your passage and to understand the meanings and the feelings that is conveyed inside your uh, passage. One of the things that is really important is learn how to write the commas. Why? Because the commas is the must rule in English or the must punctuation mark in English that has several rules to use it. Today, we are going to learn at least four rules of them when to use the commas. And then there will be other rules that you will learn uh, the more that you read and the more that you study, inshallah. Let's go ahead and to open your books in the page 410. 410 in the notebook. So you already know that commas are used in compound sentences after the greeting and closing in letter and in a series of three or more words, phrases or sentences. Here are other uses of the commas. Now, first, what does it mean comma, Aslan? Comma is something that uh, is what is a punctuation mark that we use it usually to what? That we use it usually to give you a pause when you are writing. It shows that there is a pause when you are writing. So this is the comma. This is the comma. So commas, we use it to show that there is a pause. We already know before in a grade five, in a grade four, in a grade three, you took that. I will use the commas if I have list of words. Like for example, I will buy oranges, comma, apples, and bananas. So I use it usually with a list of words. If I want, uh, if I have a list and I want to show for people that I have a list, then between each item and the other, I have to put a comma. But at the end, when you have a conjunction like and, or, or but, you will not use the comma after it. Like this sentence right here. I will buy orange, apples, and banana. طيب. I put here a comma in the first, comma in the second. Somebody would ask, Miss, but you didn't put a comma after and. We still have bananas. Why you don't put a comma right here? I will tell you because we have and already. Since you have and, yes. then any word that comes after and, we will not put a comma with it. But the one that comes before it, we will put a comma. Yes, Malak. Uh, miss, can I ask a question? Yeah. In my... Um... In my old school, um, Al Hijaz, we was learning that when you write a passage, you have put uh, you have to put comma, then you write but, like this, miss. You have to put a comma, then write but. Yes, it's the same thing, as I told oh, you. Oh yeah. If you have but or or and uh, and and or but. You will have the comma before it, but nothing after it. Understood? Yeah. Okay. It's the same thing. Now, uh, here are some extra rules of using the comma. Now, another rule for using the comma, you will use it after an introductory word or a phrase, such as will, yes, or by the way. Like, for example, well, I suppose that suggestion makes the most sense. So here... Well, I will call it introductory word. Since it's introductory and comes at the beginning, then I will put a comma after it. Also, if I use, for example, by the way, you forgot your lunch. Okay, so by the way, here it's introductory word. Again, I will put a comma after it. Or for example, if I say, ah, oh, I forgot my homework. So here I will put a comma after what the word are oh, because introductory. For example, I ask my mom, mom, can I go outside? She say no. No, you can't go outside. So all of these words, no, yes, 
oh, by the way, well, all of, or in fact, all of these words, I call them introductory words, then I have to put them at the beginning and then a comma after them. Another rule we have is to set off a noun of direct address. Like what? Like, for example, when I say a name of a person, like I'm using the name of Watin or Miss Anud or for me, I'm, I'm trying to tell her something. So I will say, Watin, comma, can you please open the door? Okay, so I want to ask her something, but first I have to call her by her name. When I call her by her name, then I have to put a little uh, pause or comma. Why, Tayyip? Then she will reply to me and she will hear me. So when I put a comma, it means that uh, like I'm calling her in the real life. So I would say, Watin, can you please open the door? It will be like this. Also right here in this example, Miss Gleason, may I take your coat? I warned you. Make to stay home. So here, if you have the name in the middle also, in the middle of the sentence, again, after the name, I have to put a comma, and before it, I have to put a comma in the middle. If I have it at the beginning, then I will have after the name, I will put a comma. But if I have at the end, if I say, for example, can you open the door, clean, then I will put the comma before the name. If I have it at the end, if I have it at the end, then I'll put the comma before it. If I have it at the beginning, I will put the comma after it. In the middle, I will put it between two commas. Miss, in the um, if it's uh, if the name came in the beginning, you're going to put the name then the comma. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Okay. After a dependent clause at the beginning of a sentence, dependent clause, like for example, we said that dependent clause, it's ca it can't stand alone. Yani, this is the dependent clause here. We said that this is a whole sentence. When they come to visit, they always bring a tasty treaty. I'm sorry. This is the dependent clause. Okay. Dependent clause, it's, it can't stand alone. Yani, when I say, when they come to visit, you can't put a full stop right here. Why? Because this uh, sentence is not completed. I would call it dependent clause. Yani, I need to complete it with another sentence to have a meaning. Okay? So since it's not a sentence, then I can't uh, end it with full stop. I have to end it with a comma. This comma will show you that there's something else will come to complete the sentence after it. And there will be another sentence. So that's why when they come to visit, they always bring a tasty treat. Okay, so here, this one, it completes the first one right here. When you have independent clauses, also I will use the comma. Also, when I use it before and or after an, a positive, a noun, uh, or noun phrase describing another noun. Like also when I have a sentence, but in this sentence I have some words or some, some clauses that uh, describe the, the, the word at the beginning. The main course, spicy chicken was delicious. So the main course right here, spicy chicken and the word delicious, they are describing what the main course. So both of them, I will put a comma after a spicy chicken and before it. Before and after interrupting words or phrases, the buffet, as they promised, was loaded with food. So here, uh, uh, this word in the middle, I will call it interrupted word. Why? Because I can just in, uh, delete it and write the sentence without it, I would say. The buffet was loaded with food. But here, I want to tell you that some people, they promised me with that. So I will call it, this is interrupted word. Yani it's not related to the sentence, but I want to put it in the middle to give you more information. So I will say the buffet, then I'll put comma, as they promised, comma, was loaded with food. Okay, so here, the, the sentence in the middle, we will call it interrupted word. Uh, I will put also another example, like for example, black and Watin, comma, who are friends visited each other. 
So here, the, the, the sentence, who are friends, I can write it and I don't have to write it. Yani I can write it and I can't. If I want to make it, I want to make it. If I don't, I, I can just delete it. But here, I want to give you more information about Malak and Watin. So I said that Malak and Watin, who are friends, by the way, they visited each other. So here, this sentence in the middle, it's interrupted word because it came in the middle without a situation for it. But I put it. Since you put it in the middle, there is no place for it, then put it between two commas to show the others that this is interrupted sentence. Then we will use also inter uh, comma between a day of a week and a month and between the date of a year. When you want to put, for example, uh, between the day of the week and the month, for example, if, if you say today is Tuesday, when you write the, the date, you will write a Tuesday, comma, and then you will write the, uh, the month, March, and then the number of the day, 14 of March, okay? And then also you can put it like this. The wedding was January 17th of uh, 2020. So between the, the, between the month and the year, and between the day of the week and the month, okay? There's a comma between the day and the month and between the month and the year. Good? Okay, miss, Bye. yeah, miss. Between, just a minute, between the street address and the city and between <coughs> the city and the state, like this, let me show you. So we will use the comma first before this and, but, or, nor. And we will use it also uh, between the month and the year. And between the city and the state. For example, we are talking about Indianapolis. It's a city inside the state of Indiana. Yani a big, big state. So I will put the small one. For example, this is a village and then comma, and this is the big city. Like, for example, I can use, uh, I can use like this, Thuwal, uh, Jidda, because Thuwal is uh, directed to Jidda, right? But it's smaller than Jidda. Then I will put the smaller one first and then the bigger one. This is when I use the cities. So I can use it between the cities, I can use it in the dates, I can use it in the name of people, I can use it in the list of the words, I can use it before the conjunction words. Yes, yeah, Dean and uh, uh, Malak and Watin, what you were asking about? Miss yeah, I was asking if there is like a name, maybe like uh, any name. So here's the name, uh, for example. And then what are we going to put? Where are we going to put the comma here or here? After the name, like for example, you are asking me, Miss Can you tell me my social mark? Okay, so now you are asking me a question, right? But because you want me to reply for you, you will say Miss Hanan and then pause a little bit. And then can you tell me the, the social mark? Here, why I put a comma after the, the name of the miss or the name of the person? Because it's in the real life, it's like you are calling him, right? So, for example, if I'm telling you to close the door, I'll say, Watin, can you please close the door? When you say Watin yeah. and you stop, this is a comma. When you say, for yeah. example, Miss Hanan and then stop, this is a comma, okay? So this is small pause. We put it usually after the name. If we have the name in the beginning, Okay, but, yeah, but we have the name the, at the end. Yeah, as in, can you <coughs> comma the end? My marks, Miss Hanan, like this. Then I will put the comma before the name. Yeah, it comes at the end. Understood? Yeah, okay, that's good. Yeah, let's go ahead right now to the page. Yes, Malak, did you have uh, any question before we go? No, miss. Okay, let's go for the page 410 and have these questions together. Read the following parts of a letter 
add commas where they are needed. Go for number one, yeah. Uh, what's it? Okay, Miss. How is your family, Mr. J uh, Mr. Glisson? Um, how is your family, apostrophe or comma, Mr. Uh -huh. Glisson? Excellent, yeah. excellent, excellent. My parents, number two, Yamalak. My parents look forward to your visit as you know. To your visit as you know. My parents look mm. forward to your visit, as you know. We can put an apostrophe after uh, after forward. No. Like, yeah. My parents, uh, uh, measure it like this, my girls. Try to read it again and pause. Would it be correct? My parents look forward to your visit, as you know. Is it correct? No, it's, it's wrong. No. Hi, Watin, try. You can put it before, as you know. My parents. Yes, excellent, Yamalak. Very good, just a minute. Excellent. So my parents look forward to your visit, as you know. So here we put the comma before it, because as you know, is one of the words that you add it for the sentence. So this is correct, Yamalak, excellent. Watin, go for number three. Sunday, April 5, two, uh, 2009. A Sunday, a post, uh, comma, April 5, 2009. Another comma here, and here I said between the day and the month, a comma, and between the month and the year, another comma, okay? So let's go okay. for number uh, four, Yalin. Are you there, Yalin? <laughs> Okay, Malak, are you there, Malak? Yeah, Miss. Yes, Malak. Dear Mr. Gleason, 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 Gleason. Um, where's the comma? We can put it after dear. Dear, Miss Gleason. No, I'll put it right here. Why? Because this one is the introductory of a message or a letter. If you want to say, for example, dear Miss Hanan, and then comma, and you will write it. Understood? So here, if you have the uh, introductory of um, a letter or a message, you will write the name of a person, dear, and then Hanan, comma. I want to tell you, and you write the whole message after that. Understood? So here, when you have the word dear, طول, you will put it after the name. Dear who? Dear Mr. Glenson, dear Hanan, dear Watin, whoever, you will put a comma. They go for add commas where they are needed in the sentences. Let's go with Galia. Hiya, Galia, number five for you. Okay. Number five. Yep. The lake. View the lake view an expensive restaurant requires reservation. The lake view an expensive restaurant requires reservations. Uh, before between the lake view and on. Excellent. This is the first one right here. Mm -hmm. Um. And restaurant and requires. Okay, so why we put it here? Can you tell me why we put here comma and another comma? When you read okay. it this way, it will be the lake of you, an expensive restaurant requires reservation. Why we put the comma like this? To make it a correct sentence? Yes, and also because the sentence in the middle is interrupting sentence. Yani, I could say like the lake of you, requires reservation. But I want to give you extra inf information about this restaurant so you, so you would know that it's really expensive. That's why it requires reservation. So that's why I will put a comma before it and after it. Let's go for number 614. Yes. We like hamburger, milkshakes, and sushi. We like hamburger, comma, milkshake, comma, and sushi. Excellent. Number five, seven, yeah, Malak, after? After we, uh, we saw the movie, we went out to, di uh, to dinner. 
after we saw the movie. Okay, after we saw the movie, we went That's out fun. for dinner. Excellent. Yeah, Malak. Very good, Malak. Number eight, yeah, Galia. Okay. Our neighbors moved to 53 West Berman Street, Berman, Graham, New York. So where's the comma? Our neighborhood moved to 53 West Berman Street, Birmingham, in New York. Um, street in Birmingham? This is a comma. Why? Because it's between the street and the city. And yeah. here is a comma. Why? Because this city is inside New York. It's like a small neighborhood inside uh, New York. So there's another comma right here. Understood? Yeah. Okay, great. Do you have any question, Watin? What, what did you ask for? No, Miss, I was uh, going to answer. That's great. Okay, my girls, I hope that you enjoyed today. Inshallah, this is for the commas for today. Next time, we'll take it on Tuesday to extend more with the information and to take exercise, inshallah. The whole day of okay. Tuesday, it would be for exercise. So if you have any question by then, you will uh, you will ask it, inshallah. Okay? Miss, I have a question. Yes. Yes. Uh, 